in the previous video we were uh, seeing about drug regulatory agencies in india so there we came across with a act called as drug and cosmetic act 1940 according to this uh, dnc act uh, the distribution sale of the medicine and uh, medical devices in india till date it's following so this uh, drug and health uh, is a concurrent uh, list of indian constitution so it is governed by both as uh, center and uh, the state government uh, under the drug and cosmetic act 1940s so let us see about the organizational uh, structure so it's uh, controlled by the ministry of health uh, cdsco and uh, drug controller uh, general india dcgi deputy drug controller of india and uh, assistant drug controller so this uh, assistant drug controller uh, in this so now here uh, it will be get bifurcated because two responsibilities they possess uh, like uh, medical de device division we have and diagnostic division so both this uh, medical uh, device and diagnostic devices for further like uh, it will be get uh, controlled by drug inspector and te technical data associates so overall uh, this is about the organization structure how this uh, regulatory bodies they are going to work so the, let us see about the main bodies which are involved over here that is the central drug standard control organization that is cdsco ministry of health and family welfare mhfw indian council of medical research icmr indian pharmaceutical association ipa drug technically uh, advisory board dtab central drug testing laboratory cttl Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission (IPC) and we have National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority that is NPPA. These are the main bodies under the regulatory authorities. So let us see about uh, some of the information related to this. So coming with the functions uh, undertaken by the central government uh, function uh, by uh, laying uh, some of the standards for the drugs, cosmetic, diagnostics, and devices. so laying down uh, regulatory measures and even uh, amendment uh, towards the acts and rules will be carried out by this regulatory bodies uh, according to the requirement of the current uh, situation even they are going to regulate uh, market authorization of the new drug also to regulate clinical research uh, in uh, india uh, and to approve license to manufacture certain categories of drugs a uh, central license approval authority Uh, that is for uh, blood banks large volume parenters and vaccines and sera so these are also the function uh, of the regulatory authorities in the india even to regulate the standards of imported drugs uh, this is a work related to the drug technical advisory board that is dtab and drug uh, constituent committee that is dcc uh, testing of drugs by central drug laboratory uh, and uh, publication of indian pharmaceutical copy pharmacopias so this and all uh, are some of the functions what you can come across with the regulatory authorities so next is the cdsco so in uh, india the central drug standard organization is the main uh, regulatory body currently regulating uh, many aspect related to the uh, drug and pharmaceutical substances like importing of the drugs its sale and manufacture of uh, even the medical devices also which have been uh, notified as a drug by which you have section uh, 3 b 4 uh, of uh, dnc act the cdsco lays down standards for drugs cosmetic diagnostic and devices and also issue license to drug manufacturers and importers to also um, lays uh, down uh, regulatory measures amendments to the acts and rules whenever required even uh, regulates market uh, organization of the new drug clinical research in india and uh, standards of imported drugs many of such uh, aspects will be under the control of cdsco suppose if you want to import the drug from other countries say so first uh, cdsco have to permit by observing the standard regulatory guidelines so they are going to permit it once it complies with the national regulatory agencies coming towards the headquarter uh, this headquarter is uh, located in new delhi the cdsco is the indian main regulatory bodies for pharmaceutical and medical devices and uh, within the uh, cdsco the drug controller general of india is responsible for regulating the pharmaceuticals and medical devices 
under DCSO, DG, GI will uh, work so that they are going to regulate pharmaceutical and medical devices. The DCGI that is the Drug Controller General of India. So it is advised by the Drug Technical Advisory Board that is DDAB and the Drug Constructive Committee. Uh, licensing and classification of the medical devices are handled by the Central uh, Licensing Ap Approval Authority that is CLAA. Let us see about Central Licensing Approval Authorities, what are their responsibilities. The CLLA is responsible for setting and enforcing safety standards, appointing notified bodies to oversee uh, conformity and uh, assessment and conducting of post-marketing surveillance and uh, issuing warnings and recall for the adverse events. So these are uh, overall uh, responsibilities of uh, CLAA. Even after giving permission for the drug to sale in the uh, market, so vigilance is required. So the surveillance will be done by the uh, regulations. It may compulsory for a company to overlook about the drug, its safetyness, and uh, severe uh, adverse effect if observed. So then it may send a uh, a warning for recalling of the drug from the market also. This overall supervision it will be carried out by the country. That's why like nowadays pharmacovigilation is become mandatory in many countries. The CDSCO establishes safety, efficacy and quality standards for the pharmaceutical as well as the medical devices. Even it publishes and updates the Indian Pharmacopoeia, a list of regulatory pharmaceuticals and devices also. For all drug and device application, the CDSCO appoints notified uh, bodies to perform confirmatory assessment procedure including testing in order to ensure compliance with their standards. The CDSCO is also divided into several zone offices which uh, do pre-licensing and post-licensing inspection, post-marketing surveillance and recalls whenever necessary. In order to smooth the work, the CDSA have been divided into different zones which carry out the different uh, responsibilities. It may be pre-licensing or it may be the post-licensing inspections or post-marketing surveillance and, and withdrawal of the drug from the marketing. So in uh, addition to its regulatory function, the CDSA also offer technical guidances whenever required. Uh, it may be related to the pharmaceutical products at the other diagnostic technique and also it uh, trains the regulatory officials and analysts uh, because periodic um, updation about the new technology is required and uh, about the research also so thereby they go for training sessions and also they monitor the adverse events so that they can safeguard uh, the safety ness of the person. The CDSCO works with the World Health Organization to promote good manufacturing practices that is the GMP and even uh, international regulatory harmony can be achieved by collaborative work with the World Health Organization. So next uh, we have National Institute of Health and Family Welfare which is called as NIHFW. It is a Apex Technical uh, Institute funded by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for promotion of uh, health and family welfare program in the country. So this is an Indian uh, central government funded uh, agencies. So they work for welfare uh, programs uh, which include education, training session, research, evaluation, uh, consultancy and specialized services they are going to provide. So National Institute of Health and uh, Family Welfare uh, it is established on March 9, 1977 by merger of uh, the National Institute of Health Administration uh, and Education with the National Institute of Family Planning. So these two commission got merged and NIHFW was framed in 1977. So uh, coming towards the list of governing body members of NIHFW, so total 18 members we have one chairman who is a ex officio, one vice chairman he is also ex officio, nine members ex officio, six members and one uh, member secretary we have he is also ex uh, officio. This is about the composition. Coming to the 
activities and responsibility so overall general uh, roles also they have they don't have only role related to the marketing of the drug and uh, giving license for the drug other than uh, maintaining health of the public also their responsibility they possess so measuring weight of the children to assess the nutritional status this you might be uh, heard in uh, news and uh, even in the newspapers also you, you will be coming across with the uh, current uh, status of the nutritional uh, uh, conditions in the children's so this is the responsibility of this committee only assessment of disease uh, like level of anemia and other diseases testing of food material like uh, cooking salt uh, for uh, level of iodine to release fund on the advice of the ministry to overcome some complication which have been arised related to the health it is responsible for all uh, government programs related to the family planning in india these are all some of the activities and uh, responsibilities which will be carried out from the committee then next is the drug technical advisory board which is called as dtab it's also the central government constituents it's a board uh, to be called a drug technical advisory board to advise the central government and the state government on the technical matter arising out of the administration of dnc act 1940 so here a uh, list of governing uh, members of ni hfw where uh, 18 members 10 ex officio members five nominated members and five elected members we can observe then coming with activities and responsibilities uh, it is uh, advise matter uh, related to the drugs the nominated and elected members of the board shall hold office for 3 uh, years and uh, they can be get uh, eligible for renomination also sometime re election may happen so that they may continue with the post the more board may uh, subject to the previous approval of the central government uh, make bylaws fixing a quorum and uh, regulating uh, its own procedure for uh, passing any uh, law like uh, minimum uh, quorum is required that's uh, members in the committee so they are going to fix that quorum and uh, any amendment is required with the existing uh, procedure so that bylaws they are going to make and they are going to uh, do some amendment to the regulation then we have in india that is a central drug testing laboratory cdtl the central uh, drug laboratory uh, it is located in kolkata is a national solitary laboratory of the government of india for uh, quality control of the drug and cosmetic and uh, established under the same dnc act 1940 it's a oldest quality control laboratories of the drug control authorities in india it function under the director general of health services in ministry of health and family welfare coming with the composition indian pharma uh, copia commission ipc and is a general body of uh, 19 uh, members and governing body 10 uh, member uh, scientific uh, body 23 experts and cipl lab and the ipc secretariat so uh, you may be knowing about ipc so indian pharmacopia was prepared by the indian pharmacopia commission then coming towards the activities and responsibility development of comprehensive monographs according to the priority to the monographs of the drug included in the national essential list and their dosage forms will be specified preparation of monographs for products that have normally been uh, in the market for not less than 2 years collaborate with the pharmacopias of different countries like uh, british pharmacopia united states pharmacopia and uh, international pharmacopias the purpose is to generate some harmonization with the global standards and uh, they can achieve the standards internationally which is required to export the drug also periodic updations they are going to get by this collaborative practice so this all uh, related to the indian scenario of regulation so there we came across with uh, different uh, regulatory authorities and uh, different uh, responses and responsibilities so in the next uh, video i'll be talking about uh, the other countries by taking example of usa and japan let us see what are the uh, regulatory bodies they have and what are their functions